Father God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you that we can set aside our agenda, God, and what we think ought to happen. And we can let you do whatever you want in the service, God. God, I feel you pouring out a praise in my heart, God, that goes beyond songs or music, God, but it's from the very depths of my soul, God. Glory to your name, God. Lord, I thank you for your son, Jesus. Lord, I thank you that right now I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places, God. Lord, right now, I'm an heir and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Now and right now, God, I am the apple of your eye, God. Right now, God, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Right now, God, I am the workmanship of your hands created in Christ Jesus to do good works, God. God, tonight, I want to thank you for everything you're doing, God. I want to thank you for loving me, for searching out time and eternity to find that one little spot where Kevin O'Connor was going to inhabit time. And you came and found me. You sought me out. You bought me, Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we Thank you, Lord. Reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. You'll find He's not too busy to hear your heart's cry. He's passing by this moment your needs to supply reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by Lord I thank you for this night God we ask that you would bless the offering we're about to take up God Lord, I pray that you would bless each person that has to give and each person that doesn't have to give, God. I know that you give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, God. I know that you sustain the good and the, and the evil just alike, God, that you're no respecter of persons, that you cause the rain to fall on the just and the unjust. And God, tonight I ask that you would Bless each and every heart. We bless each and every hand that gives and those that would give but don't have to. And I pray, God, that you would use it all for your kingdom, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you, Tristan. I knew Carmen was ready for an offering because she took my wallet out of my pocket. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of go through announcements while the offering's being taken up. Our brother and sister over at New Life, New Life. Oh, I got messed it all up. Jason, I'm sorry. Our brothers and sisters at New Vision World Ministries, and if you don't know where that's at, it's the Old Abundant Life Temple Building. They have a midweek service tomorrow night at 7 p.m. So if you didn't get enough of tonight, go over there and visit them. <laughs> go over and visit Jason and Jolene. They will appreciate it. Carmen and I have been over for one or two on Thursday night so far. Uh, also, Touch of Life Ministries from Pastor Shannon's church down at Life Point are having their Touch of Life Ministry at the Boys and Girls Club on... Uh, it's on South Walnut. Why does it say Tuesday? It doesn't say Tuesday. It's marked out. Okay, it doesn't. It's not marked out. It's on Saturday the 11th. Yeah. 
It says Tuesday. It's not marked out. Anyway, it's Saturday. This coming Saturday on the 11th from 2 to 4, if you know anybody that needs free clothes, free shoes, free food, or a word from God, send them over to the Boys and Girls Club at 502 Walnut. Uh, also, I have a dream invite, okay? We got an invite from Pastor Melvin Simpson at uh, First Church of God in Christ on First Street, just across the street from Windsor Place. On Saturday, the 11th, at 3 p.m., they're having their Martin Luther King Day program over there. <coughs> the address is 2802 West First. I told Brother Melvin that I would tell you and make sure that you knew what was going on. Amen? Amen. Uh, also, the Jesus Project is open tomorrow. Right? <laughs> make sure. Look, I don't care. Look, well, I do care. I would like you to go visit. But if you don't have time to visit, what you can do is you can share what we post about it on Facebook. That way, other people who may need clothes or, or whatever they might need over there, there's all kinds of, I mean, if you, if you need a, I, I promise, I saw a VCR over there. If you feel like, I'm dying for a VCR, go get one. They got one, okay? They got all kinds of Christmas stuff, got all kinds of clothes, and the clothes right now are cheap, okay? I mean cheap, like what? it's a dollar bag is what they're doing right now. Whatever you can fit in a bag for a dollar, okay? I don't know about you, but when I go and hear somebody say, whatever you can fit in a bag, I'm going to push that bag to its limit, right? So go push that bag to its limit and spend a dollar, amen? amen. Also, huh? <laughs> well, we do. Well, right now, we're trying to get all this out of there because their whole back room is completely full. Okay? No, she's got pads. Oh, yeah. Just barely pads. Oh, I know. I was in there. Uh, revival starts this, not tomorrow, but next Friday. Not, not this Friday, but the Friday after. Okay. Is that the 17th or 19th? The 17th, 18th, and 19th. Pastor Peanut from Cedarville and his sons from Ark City are going to come over here. They're going to do live praise and worship. Pastor Peanut's son Trey is preaching on Friday night. Pastor Peanut is preaching on Saturday night. And I'm preaching Sunday morning and Sunday night. Amen? A hallelujah revival. Hallelujah. You know, that's the most awesome word that you can use to praise God. Hallelujah. Do you know why? The word halle, hallelujah, that word means a joyful praise. And the word ja is not ja. If it was Hebrew, it would be yah or yahweh. So, the most joyful praise to Yahweh. Amen? So, hallelujah revival is coming up. The set. 17th, 18th, and 19th. It's all over Facebook. I got flyers. Look. I got flyers I'm handing out. Okay? So you need to let everybody know. I don't know if we can hang them up at people's place to work because people get all bent out of shape about the gospel. But they can, they can, get, happy, they can get happy in the same pants they got mad in. Thank you. Because I'm preaching. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Woo! All right. That's all my announcements. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hey, if you don't announce it, then people don't know. Amen. All right? And since we're on Facebook, now lots of people know, right? Amen. I'll preach to myself. Y'all don't even have to. Look. Let me find my place here. Do, 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 do. Man, okay. I might have what? The other we day, uh huh. They have this 12, 19, 17 minute song. And in the middle of this song, it said, Come be the fire inside of me, come be the flame upon my heart, and come be the fire inside of me until you and I are one. Amen. I like that. There's only one way to be one with the Father. Ain't that right? That's right. How do you be one with the Father? 
the Son. There's only one way. There's only, look, I know, look. Now I know what you just said, okay? I want to be one with the Father. But there's only one way to the Father. Now, we talked about a couple weeks ago about the way, right? Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Well, when he said way, he didn't just mean I'm the way to heaven. He meant I'm the way to live. I'm the way you're supposed to behave. I'm the way you're supposed to interact with other people. You see how I treat people? That's how you treat people. You see how I react to sinners? That's how you react to sinners. You know, most of the time we get it totally backwards. Amen. We get mad at sinners and we 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 allow hypocritical Christians to do whatever they want. Jesus did just the opposite. Right. How can I be mad at a sinner? They don't know any better. Jesus said they're doing what their father told them to do. Who's their, who's their father? The king of this world. It's the devil. You can't get mad. Look, that would be like me. That would be like me getting mad at my kids when I didn't give them the rule to follow in the first place. Right? That would be like going, hey, I don't want you to do this. That's the way we should do it, right? But the way that we act towards Christ, to unsaved people, they don't even know the rule. Amen. How are they supposed to follow? Amen? Yeah, I think it's so, so, so much that we get mad at them. We hurt for them, you know? Oh, no. I'm we not talking about you. I'm not talking about you. We got a whole generation of Christians that are doing it backwards. Amen. Yeah. We'll tolerate People living however they want once they know Jesus. We'll tolerate people doing all kinds of evil things after they come to Jesus. But then we'll get mad at unsaved people for not living. Not living right. Well, they're evil. Don't go near them. What about that person sitting next to you in the pew that ain't take care of what they should be taking care of? Amen. Amen. Because here's the truth. Is salvation free? Yes. But salvation also has a caveat. It expects you to change. Amen. Salvation goes now. I'm teaching how I know that. Because in 1 Thessalonians, no, it's Titus. Titus. In Titus, he says, the, uh, the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us to say no to ungodliness and evil desires and to live righteously and holy and upright lives in this present age not in some weirdo age to come we get all fruit loopy about that people get fruit loopy about that with the beatitudes oh that's for some future kingdom because nobody can live that away he didn't say you had to be look he said be perfect right he's no jesus said be perfect he said, be perfect like your Father in heaven is perfect. But this perfection is my goal. I might not ever hit the goal, but I cannot move the target. Amen? I can't go, well, Destiny, you know, I, I, just, I just don't think I can do this rule and this rule, so I'm going to take this target, and I'm just going to move it down the wall a little bit, and then I think I'll be all right. That's what Christians are doing. Right? Yeah. Here's another thing. Here's another thing. We need to get back to loving Jesus. If I love Jesus, I'll love my brother. Amen. If I love Jesus, I'll love my enemy. Amen. How do I know that? Jesus said, if you love only them that love you, what thanks do you have? Even sinners do this. He said, if you lend just to those you expect to be repaid from, what thanks do you have? Even sinners do that. Jesus is trying to explain the difference that we're supposed to make. Amen? 
Now, it's not going to look like the world because where the world sees success, Jesus saw Jesus saw evil. Jesus saw hypocrisy. He said, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. They came to, remember James and John, the sons of thunder. Why'd they call them that? Because they want to call fire down from heaven. Right? Call them that because they said, Lord, these people ain't acting right. Let's call fire down from heaven and kill them like back in the day. And Jesus looked up and said, you don't even know what you're asking for. Because here's the thing. Jesus was God, right? And he knew that not one of us was righteous. Amen. So if James and John would have called fire down from heaven, it would have consumed everybody. Even them. <laughs> Amen. I titled this, Don't Lose Your First Love. Let's go to Revelation chapter 2 real quick. We'll get some text. Amen. While we go there, I want to share last night, Lord and I were eating at a restaurant. I won't say the restaurant. So her meal came out and said, on the phone, and she said, I don't have much taste. So I grabbed another bite. I was like, okay, here's what you do. And I got the bowl of chicken. Well, you're, you're right. And, and it is, it, we are yeah, well, here's the thing. Now, watch this. I'm going to show you just from your own example what Christians are doing wrong right now. Okay? What we're doing wrong right now is we're going, we're going. That's all people see is somebody shaking their finger at them. Instead of somebody opening their arms to them. Yeah. Amen? Amen? How do I know that? Because you didn't like the first bite you got, did you? Yeah. Yeah. Salt should make things taste better. Yeah. Yeah. Salt preserves things. Right. Paul said this. He said, stay away from people who cause stupid and foolish arguments among you. That all they want to do is divide. I'm telling you, I won't get into dumb, foolish arguments because it ain't, it isn't worth it. It's not worth winning an argument but losing the war for somebody's soul. It's not worth it. Even when it comes, look, I know, I know, I've got some politically uh, motivated people somewhere on that side of the room. I'm not looking at either one of them. I'm not looking at either one of them. Okay. I'm not looking at either one of them. But I will tell them this. It's not worth winning a political argument to sacrifice my ability to reach somebody to win their soul. Amen. I'll be all things for all people by any means so I can win some of them. Amen. That's what Paul said. He said, I have become all things to all men that I might by any means win some of them. Now he realized, I'm not going to win everybody. Right. Amen? But he'll do whatever it took to get there. Jesus did the same thing. He did it so much that the Pharisees said, oh, he's eating with tax collectors. Sinners. And they sent somebody over there. And then somebody went over there and said, hey, Jesus, why are you eating with these guys that don't wash their hands? Right? The Pharisees were all about the outside. All about what happened on the outside. That's why they were astonished when that woman with the issue of blood grabbed a hold of him. That's why they were disgusted when Mary came in and wept all over Jesus' feet and dried him with her hair. They were all disgusted. Why are you letting her touch you? Jesus rebuked them. He said, when I came in the house, you didn't offer me the best seat. He said, you didn't wash my feet. You didn't anoint my head with oil. 
You didn't bless me. He said, but from the moment she's come in, she's done nothing but cry and weep and anoint my feet with her tears. And she's wiped them with her hair. So the people that we think got it, as we look at Jesus' life, are the ones that totally missed it. Now I know I want God to see me doing good things. But sometimes, to reach people, you've got to be enough salt to make them want more. After you put salt on it, you wanted more. It's like popcorn with no salt. This ain't right, okay? Now, you all might like popcorn with no salt, but I'm telling you right now that there's a big... I remember when my grandma used to make popcorn on the stove. I know, I know there's some people in here that remember popcorn on the stove, okay? Yeah, yeah. Popcorn on the stove, right? That's great stuff. Hey, just so you know, the microwave batch, you can rip it open and put it in the pan and they pop on the stove. Oh, I know. It's just regular popcorn in there. But when you cook it on the stove and you don't put no salt on it, it's a big difference. Your mouth gets all dry. Doesn't taste the same. But all of a sudden, something happens when you put salt on it. It's real good, and you'll empty a bowl fast. Grandma used to make bowls, two bowls about this big, because there were so many people at the farm to eat popcorn. We gotta be enough salt to make it taste good. That's right. The song said, oh taste and see that the Lord is good. Yes. Amen? Yes. <laughs> I keep, pre I keep preaching this, and I'm going to say it again. We keep preaching uh, condemnation. We've done that for 40 or 50 years now, and we're seeing the fruit. We're seeing the fruit. Nobody wants that. Who wants to come to a God that they think hates their guts and doesn't want anything to do with them? Who wants to come and worship a God like that? Nobody's going to want to. Now look, God is not a fan of your sin. And he hates it. It detests him. That's what he said, right? But we got to preach the gospel that God loves people. And God wants people to change. That there is a way to change. That there is a way to get to God. Amen? we got to stop being Pharisees and shutting the kingdom of heaven up in men's faces. Amen. We go, well, you know, you just don't quite look like I want you to look. Come on, come on. Nobody ever say that to you, does me. I'm just telling you. <laughs> she missed it. It's okay. Go to Revelation chapter 2. Let's start. Let's start at verse 1. It says, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou cannot bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them to be liars, and hast borne and has had patience, and for my name's sake hast labored and hast not fainted. Uh-oh, this sounds like pretty good church going folks, right? Sound like, sounds like they should have it all together. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen. Repent and do the first works. Or else I will come again unto thee quickly. And I will remove thy candlestick out of his. His. It didn't say it. It says his place. 
except thou repent. Wow. Wow. Why would God say that to somebody that's born and has had patience and done the work of the Lord? Why? Because you get so busy doing church stuff that you forget it's about Jesus. Man. You forget to act like Jesus. You forget to try to emulate Jesus. You forget to try to live your life like Jesus did. We get so caught up, you know, I heard this one time. I heard this one time and I was I was baffled when I heard it. Uh, <laughs> talking to a person of one denomination, I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say the denomination. But they were like, this is uh that's great. But we're this denomination. Now I wasn't arguing anything about denominations. I was stating what the Bible said. And they would rather believe what their denomination believes than what the Bible says. That's a prime example of what I'm talking about. We can get so caught up in our religious rituals and how we you know, mom and pop's church done it this way, and my old church done it that way, and look, I'm sure there's people that started out with us that remember when we did it a different way. We can't get caught up in how we're doing it. We gotta be focused on why we're doing it. Amen. And who we're doing it for. That's right. Amen? Because the how is gonna change from generation to generation, from generation to generation, because people and, and people and uh, uh, cultures all change. You leave America and you go to Africa, there ain't going to be a nobody in the place sitting down. You go from America to China, nobody's going to be standing up. Why? Because they'll get killed. They don't have great big rock concert churches. It's all underground. It's all quiet. It's all a devoted, devout, very, very, I'm, I'm telling you right now, it doesn't matter if you raise your hands or you don't, as long as your heart is worshiping God. Amen. Jesus dealt with this. Woman at the issue, or the woman at the well, started talking denominations with him. Well, you Jews say over in Jerusalem is where we ought to worship on that mountain. But our father Jacob dug this well. And this is where we worship. You know what I heard? Our piano player is better than yours. Our worship songs is better than yours. We don't like the way you do it. You don't like the way we do it. And Jesus looked at her and said, guess what, lady? I'm going to say how he did. Jesus was pretty blunt with her. He said, woman, one of these days, there's coming a day where on this mountain or that mountain, nobody's going to worship on either one of them. But the, they're going to worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And God seeks such to worship him. Amen. I want devout people. Look, look, I, I love African churches great. I love how active they are and how, how everybody's dancing. I watch that little video of uh, uh, Man Boozy sent Carmen and I from over there in Uganda and that little boy is playing that little bongo drum and everybody's dancing around and they're having a ball, okay? And then you watch services in countries where it's illegal to be a Christian. And they have to have a room secluded, no windows, nobody can look in. And they're in there Tears running down their face. Probably want to scream out for God all they, all they can, but can't. I'm telling you, it's not about what you're doing. It's about who you're doing it for and why you're doing it. Doesn't matter if you're in a, in a room that can seat 250 people or a room that can only seat five. Your heart's got to be in the right place. Jesus said, I see your works, but you've lost your heart. You know, 
I'm, I'm fighting a battle right now. With just getting this building, I've seen people that were going all out in fifth year downshift all of a sudden and put it in neutral like we can coast now. <laughs> Amen. It's the wrong time. Put it back in gear. We got to go. Amen. There's stuff to do. <laughs> what the five real quick. I'm going to take that five-speed transmission out and put a two-speed two power glide in there. All i got to do is hit one time. Amen? So you lost your passion. You lost the passionate pursuit that you have of me. We can't never let it be about this place. Love this building. Love this building. But it can't never be about this. It's got to be about Jesus. Amen. It's got to be about my heart so full and so overflowing. And there's so much in me that if I don't say something to somebody, I'm going to blow up. Amen? But I don't know about you guys, but I got wrecked about five years ago. I was complete. And I've been a preacher a long time. But I got wrecked. Ain't nothing else. I don't have anything. This is it. That's right. It's all I got now. And I mean to tell you, I ain't, I'm not going to rest until we get there. That's right. Amen? That's right. And I'm trying to get a people motivated to run with me. Amen? Amen? Amen. It ain't about, it ain't about, look, I know you got jobs. I know you got, look, you go to, you go to Cessna right now. You better not go to the wing section or you're going to hear about Jesus. Amen. Amen. That right, Mike? Harold Donaldson Jr. will tell everybody in Cessna, I watched, I watched Peanut pray with people right in the middle of, right in the middle of Cessna. Watch him pray with a guy who received Jesus Christ. God don't care what you do. Right. Cares about how you're doing it. Right. Cares about why you're doing it. And he wants you to know why and who you're doing it for. Everyone's that fire. Amen. Out of control. So that everybody can see. Well, here's the thing. We spent too much time doing this right here. Come here, Mike. I need your help. Now I want you, I want you to act like me for a second and jump around like a crazy maniac for about five seconds. Ah! I got my wet blanket now. Yeah. Now I'm going to throw it on you. Yep. Calm down now. You're getting a little too crazy. Yeah. Yeah. My problem is, we ain't got enough crazy people. That's right. Amen? Yeah. I got enough people that's, that's willing true. to pray with everybody in Walmart and act like a moron like I did. Amen? Well, don't stay in Egbert's very long. Don't stay in Egbert's very long. I know that's right. Me, me and Pastor Doug were in eight verse today just talking about Jesus, talking about, talking about all kinds of stuff. People sitting all around us. There was people walked in that knew me. I didn't even see them come in when he was talking so much about Jesus. You know, the Lord moved me out there. I find it it's very interesting because on a Sunday, I lose count how many ministers Now watch this. This is what we should be doing. This is what we should be doing. Instead of throwing wet blankets on people, we should be throwing more kindling on the fire. Because the brighter they get, the brighter you are. Look, here's, I, I heard one of the most profound statements that I forgot that I forgot. I'd heard this message. Did anybody heard that, that message from, uh, I can't even, Lockridge. I think his name was Lockridge. Gee, he said, that's my king. Remember that sermon? I shared it on Facebook. He said, he's the king of glory. He's the king of all ages. That's my king. Amen. And then at, at the, the whole sermon, if you ever listen to that whole sermon, he said, each one of us are a pearl in our own right. But none of us are a necklace until we're strung together. Amen. He said, he said, None of us are going to be effective witnesses for Christ until we're strung together. It ought to be like a candlelight 
vigil like we have where you, one person likes the next person and the next person likes the next person and all of a sudden we got a whole room full of candles that's lit but in so many churches they got that guy following around with the little you remember the the little little damper that would just put the candle out just walk right by just put it out we don't need any of that we need to throw our dampers away we need to throw our wet blankets away <laughs> we need a renewing a rekindling of the fire we need revival and I don't mean revival like we're talking look look I love I love the fact that God has some churches that are working together and I'm one of them that's been working with other churches but the fire of revival that we need isn't the kind that's just at the altar. Well, here's the thing. There, there ain't nothing. The day of Pentecost, let, let's go ahead and read it, okay? And when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all in one place with one accord, and there came, as it were, clothed in tongues of fire that rested upon each of them. And they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And we think that's what the day of Pentecost was about. We think that that's what it was about, what happened in the upper room. That's not what the day of Pentecost was for. The day of Pentecost isn't about coming to the altar and falling down. It ain't about speaking in tongues. It's about being a witness. Amen. Because what happened on the day of Pentecost that was really impressive was not what happened to the 120 in the upper room. It's what happened to the 3,000 people that got saved afterwards. They came out of the upper room and everybody started going, oh, they're drunk. Look at them. They're acting foolish. And Peter stood up and preached a sermon that would make most every one of us preachers look bad. And 3,000 people gave their heart to Jesus Christ right then. It doesn't say they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. It doesn't say they spoke in tongues or anything. It says they were saved. The gospel didn't come down here to make you speak in tongues. The gospel didn't come down here to make cloven tongues of fire fall on people. The gospel came down here to save souls. Amen. I'm not against the Holy Spirit. Lord knows I'm not. I love the Holy Spirit. I love the work of the Holy Spirit. I believe the Holy Spirit can heal every infirmity that we pray and ask God to heal. There's nothing that the Holy Spirit can't do. But the Holy Spirit didn't come to glorify himself. The Holy Spirit came to lift up Jesus. Amen. The Holy Spirit came to empower the church to be witnesses. Acts chapter 1. Jesus said, tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Now I'm going to show you what it doesn't say. Tarry in Jerusalem until you receive power upon, from on high so that you can have massive church services and you can have people walk up front, fall down at the altar and cry and weep and wail and get up the same exact way that they came and leave church the exact same way they came there. Come on. Yeah, that's right. Said, you'll be empowered to be my witnesses revival is real when you see people getting saved that's revival I don't want to hear anything else I love I love I love my altar time I've had some of the most powerful experiences with God and his Holy Spirit that people could ever imagine I'm a living witness that God can heal people. I was, when I was 14 years old, I went to the doctor. I was born with a glove foot, 60% of muscle missing in this leg. They broke my ankle and set it when I was 11 months old. When I was 14 years old, they said, you'll be in a wheelchair by the time you're 30. I remember being 17 years old. Where Strimple Sign is now. 
there used to be a church called Solid Rock Church. Tom Sawyer was the pastor. Believe it or not, that was his real name. And I remember Gary Close came over for this revival we was having. And some lady evangelist came in, and they had an altar call. And I remember falling down at that altar call. And I remember Gary Close grabbing my feet. And I remember him saying these words, you'll never see a wheelchair. God's healed you tonight. I'm almost 41 years old. Ain't been in a wheelchair. Don't plan on being in a wheelchair. I'm not talking against the gifts of the Spirit. I'm not talking against the move of the Spirit. I just want an authentic revival of loving Jesus Christ and lifting Him up. Amen? I want to lift Jesus up. Not just in my life, but in my, you know, not just in how I talk. Not just in, 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 in my, my, when I'm at church, but when I'm at home, when people show up, they'll know whether I'm, whether I'm asleep or whatever. They're going to know Jesus is there. They're going to know I'm a Christian. I want to know when I go to Edwards, there ain't nobody in there going to shut me up about talking about Jesus. Nobody's going to stop me from witnessing the people. Nobody's going to stop me from loving people. Nobody's going to stop me from being a witness. Why? Because i got power to be a witness. you got power to be a witness. Now the Holy Spirit can use you with whatever gifts He wants. But i got news for you. And i got news for all these other people. You might be watching right now, you're going to get real mad at me right now. Not every preacher got the gift of prophecy. Not every pastor's got the gift of healing. When do we get off thinking that we can tell other people what gifts they got? Aren't the gifts given as the Holy Spirit sees fit? Isn't that how it works? Amen? But we all want that pastor. It doesn't matter what pastor it is. We're going to come up front, and it doesn't matter which one of it is. You better have a word for me. You better be able to heal me. You better... Now, first of all, none of them preachers do any of it. Amen? You ever come pray, and I pray for you, and you get healed, it ain't me. Amen. Because I don't have that. Amen. God has to do it. We get so caught up in who's praying for me. We don't realize they're only acting on somebody else's behalf. <laughs> Amen. I don't come to you in my name. Look, I don't ever come up to nobody and go, I'm in the name of Kevin. If you ever hear anybody say that, you better run away as fast as that leg will let you go. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we got to get over it. Now, I believe the Holy Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit with all my heart. Amen? Amen. But we got to get back to the gospel. That's right. The gospel did not present itself as the Holy Spirit as the ends. The Holy Spirit was a means to Christ. Amen. It's talking about the gifts of the Spirit. Don't say He gave to everyone. No. It says to one. He gave this one. I give this gift. Right, right. <laughs> Man, he acts like he might have read his Bible. Man, I like that. I like that. I'm almost done. I know, y'all don't believe me. Whew. What do we need to do? Well, let's, let's, let's see what he said. What do we need to do? First thing he said, he said, huh. he said, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. The first thing he says is remember. Remember whence you have fallen. Amen? Amen? So many times we get too caught up in, in our Christian life that we don't take a second and just look back at how far God brought me. Amen. Look, if y'all would take a moment to look down the path of your life and all the stuff that could have happened. All the stuff that should have happened. All the stuff that did happen. And God still saw fit to get you here tonight. Amen. Come on. You'd be happy. Amen. 
you'd be on fire. You'd be ready to go and tell somebody else, God done brought me a mighty long way. Look at that. Amen. 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 What's the second thing? Ooh, you getting right there, ain't you? What's the next point, Pastor? Keep on going. <laughs> huh. Ooh. Oh, man. Now let's look at it. He said, he said, remember, therefore, whence thou art fallen, and repent. Uh-oh. Man, hold on. You mean Christians got to repent? You mean Christians got to repent? The Bible says whatever is not of faith Thank you. is sin. That's right. Amen? Amen. I want to repent. Lord, forgive me for everything. I spoke the name of Jesus and did it. Lord, forgive me every time that I've been a bad witness where I've marred the gospel of Christ with my own stupidity, with my own inaction, with my own dumb actions, with the stuff that I thought I was over and then I slipped right back into that sin. I know none of y'all done it. I know none of y'all ever just slipped right back into some sin that you thought you got over. But I have. That's why it says you need to be sober and vigilant for your adversary the devil seeks. He walks to and fro the whole earth seeking whom he may devour. Amen. He's waiting for one opportunity for you to go, well, I don't have to go to church tonight. Or one opportunity for you to go, well, I don't think I need to pray tonight. Or one opportunity for you to go, well, I'd rather just go do this thing. And then all of a sudden I got caught up in something else. And it took me a whole year to get over it. Tammy saw me do it. Mike saw me do it. Amen. We've got to be able to repent. You're not God. You're not perfect. You need you. The mark is to be perfect. But until you get there, you got to keep trying. And when you mess up. What does John say? Was it John? I think it was John. Was it John that said that? He said, brothers, I write these things unto you that you would not sin, but if any of you do sin, he has an advocate with the Father. Amen? Amen. But we've got to be willing to repent. Not just of things that are sinful, but things that were useless. Things that didn't help us. Things that we... Didn't have any business doing because that's not God, what God wanted us to do. That's why he said, since we're compassed round about with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sin. You mean there's a difference? Yeah. yeah. There's some things you're carrying that just aren't useful. Amen. They may not be sinful. They're just not useful. Amen? Amen. God wants you to be useful. Amen. I'm done. This last thing, okay? Last thing. Brian had to go through all these now. It's all his fault. <laughs> and do your first works. Now I know I'm going to put myself on the spot with this one, okay? But I know that there's a couple wives in this building that would be thrilled to death if their husbands started doing the stuff that they did when they first met them. <laughs> You know, you know, when you got flowers for no good reason. When you when you showed up unannounced. When you listened. When, yeah, when you listened like you really wanted to hear what she had to say. Those things. Right? I know I, I always say this, but when I'm talking about a relationship with Christ, the church is his bride. Amen. Amen. The church is his bride. Do you know what a bride in the Jewish custom had to do to get ready for the groom? Now the groom, he went off to build a house, right? That's why Jesus looked at his disciples in John chapter 14 and said, If you believe in God, believe also in me, because in my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. And Tom, he said, and, and henceforth you, you know him and have seen him. And Thomas said, how do we know him? And how do I see him? He said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. You remember that verse? He said, I'm going away and prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. Right? This one's with me. He's building your house. 
Why? Because he's the bridegroom. Now the bride is supposed to get herself ready. How does she do that? Well, she starts doing stuff brides do. She starts learning how to cook the right meal. She starts working on what she's going to look like when the groom gets there. She finds the best dress she can. She finds her marriage garments. Soaks and perfumes for a long time. I got something for you on that one, okay? Now watch this. The garment of praise. I'm praising God that I'm getting a husband. I'm praising God that I'm getting Christ, okay? I'm preparing myself. Jesus said that we must be without spot and blemish, so we got a lifetime to get our clothes right, okay? Now watch this. The perfume, what, what, what's perfume in heaven? Anybody remember where I'm going with this? Prayers. The prayers of the saints are like a sweet smelling savor. Like fragrance of perfume that goes up before the Lord day and night. Yet we're a church that doesn't know how to pray. Jesus didn't come into the temple and kick all the tables over and smack people around with a whip and say, my father's house is going to be called a house of praise. He said, my father's house shall be called a house of prayer. Amen. Oh, because the bride is continually hoping and waiting upon the return of the groom. Jesus told a story of ten virgins, how five of them had their lamps lit, trimmed, and they were ready to go. And five of them didn't have enough oil and had to go buy some. And while they were gone, the bridegroom came. And he warned them again, I'm coming like a thief in the night. One will be in the field and one will be taken. It's not enough for us to think we're okay. We have to be ready to leave at a moment's notice. That means my life has to be in order all the time. My stuff's got to be in order all the time. And if I find myself missing the mark and I find myself not doing the things I know I should be doing, I need to look from whence I've fallen, repent, and do the first works. And then Jesus is not going to be talking to me when he's saying this. Amen? I'm telling you, friends, it ain't about it ain't about what church you go to or how great the worship music is. It's about are you ready to go see Jesus right now? That's the gospel truth. How many of you in this room think you're ready to go see Jesus right now? Oh, amen. Amen? Come on. Ooh, I like, I know Grandma is, she ain't holding her hand up, she can't hear me. Everybody stand to your feet. I want to close. I'm so on fire for God right now, it's not even funny. I haven't had a moment's sleep that I haven't had a dream about what God's doing and what God's wanting me to do. And, Ooh, I just want some people that's going to be on fire with me. Amen. 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 Father God, we ask you right now. Lord, I don't know who's watching on Facebook. I don't know who's in this room that may say, God, I need a new fire. I need to, I need to repent. I need to look back and see where you took me from and where you got to take me, God. And I need to repent and I need to get back on fire for God. But God, we ask you right now in Jesus' name that you would light the lamp, God. That you would light the lamp of the first love of Jesus Christ in the hearts of your people again, God. Lord, I pray that you'd make this church a praying church, God. I pray, God, that you would make this church a place where we're getting ready for eternity, God. God, I pray that you would help us not to just get ourselves ready, God, 
but to get the community around us ready to see your son. Lord, I ask that you would pour out a new and a fresh touch, God, yes. from your spirit. Lord Jesus, you said that you were going to send the comforter to us. And he's going to teach us all things whatsoever you have commanded us, God. That he would empower us to live this life for you. Lord, we thank you that the Holy Spirit can reside in every believer's heart. That the Spirit of Christ would compel us to live for you. Lord, I ask you right now to help me, to help everyone in this room, God, and anybody that's watching on Facebook, wherever they're at, God, that you would meet with them right now, that they would walk out of this time, God, this moment, with a brand new perspective, God, and not lose their first love. But hold on to it, God. That they would cherish it, God. That it would be the most important thing in their life. To live for you. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would ingrain this message in the hearts and minds of every believer. That we would be ever vigilant to listen to your voice and to heed your call. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you guys.